I've got Nick Robbins. He's head of HSBC's Climate Change Center of Excellence, and he joins us now. Nick, thanks so much for coming. Thank you. So is all this weather that we're seeing, this freak weather, is it freak or is it actually a direct result of climate change? I think we should look at climate change as a threat multiplier. Uh, it increases the likelihood of certain types of extreme events. Uh, I think we should remember that uh, this year is turning out to be the hottest year on record. We've had the warmest six months uh, in the first half, the warmest spring, uh, and the warmest 12 months from last, Ju last July to last June. Uh, and that's over a period of 180 years of, of temperature measures. And that's global warming. And that is global warming. I think that is, um, that is now very, very clear. The uh, National Oceanographic and the uh, Atmospheric Administration in the U.S. has just come out with a state of climate uh, report saying that global warming is now undeniable. Uh, and so, th so there isn't as much a dispute as there was as there once was. I mean, is there anybody that doesn't fully accept this now? I mean, there are clearly uh, critics and, and there are so-called uh, skeptics. But in terms of the fundamental science of global warming, that is now uh, established. The issue then is what are going to be the impacts in terms of the impacts on economies and societies yeah. going forward. How do you tackle it? Well, I think obviously there are, there are two main uh, strategies. One is to drive down emissions, uh, what is called mitigation through uh, switches to clean energy. And secondly, is the key issue is adaptation, which is what really uh, countries are thinking about now in, in, in response to these extreme events. Now, Copenhagen, is there any progress on those talks? Well, Copenhagen uh, delivered a very uh, small-scale agreement, the Copenhagen Accord, uh, and uh, negotiations for a follow-up agreement have just finished uh, this weekend uh, in Bonn. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like the, the prospects for Cancun, where governments meet again uh, this December, have not been not going to be good. Uh, I think some of the momentum ha has uh, reduced this year. But there is that is because of the recession? Recession is one aspect, although we have uh, picked up that actually governments have uh, allocated quite a large proportion of their stimulus, about 15%, right. to uh, clean energy and green infrastructure measures. Uh, so it's not just uh, the recession. I think partly it was some of the, the doubts, which we think were misplaced doubts around the science of climate change earlier this year, and then some of the fundamental geopolitics around getting a deal on climate change. What are the best policies that individual governments uh, can implement to fight climate change? Well, I think that's where governments really need to start focusing now is on uh, issues like energy efficiency. Uh, the International Energy Agency in its recent 2050 forecast, the energy technology perspectives, uh, said that governments could actually reduce the cost of energy by $110 trillion through to 2050 with an upfront investment of $46 trillion. That's a great prize to go after. So energy efficiency, reducing demand for fuels, that makes your economies much more energy secure. And by the by, you also reduce uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And the economic argument for all of this is, is pretty simple. If you don't tackle it now, it's going to be more expensive later. Well, that's right. I, I think this, this can be seen as a very, very low-cost, good-value insurance policy. There are many strategies you want to take now which are going to be pay off um, themselves, and you get the added bonus that actually you're avoiding uh, more uh, extreme events in the future. All right. Nick Robbins from HSBC, head of climate change. Thanks very much. Thank you.